Hello, this video is to help you understand MLA requirements, formatting, and show you the style guide. You're probably asking yourself, what is MLA formatting? Is this designed to make me crazy? No, it's really not. It's a system to make sure that writers are given the credit they deserve for coming up with the words and ideas that they thought of first. Because after all, when you go on to do great things, won't you want credit for your original ideas? So, what's the system? Well, it's a two-part system. There are in-text citations, and then those correspond with the Works Cited page. So, in your paper, every time you pull information from another source, any quotation, paraphrase, summary, thoughts, ideas, words, phrases, anything that's not your original work, you need to tell your readers who wrote it or came up with it originally, and what page number you found it on. Then it's up to your reader to do more research if they choose. If they want to do more research on your source, they need to go to the Works Cited page where you will have helpfully listed out all of the pieces of information you use to construct your paper. <clears throat> there are two main manuals for MLA. The Handbook for Writers of Research Papers and the MLA Style Manual and Guide to Scholarly Publishing. The handbook is mostly used by undergraduate and graduate students when writing papers for class. The style manual is used for professionals. So we're going to focus on, of course, those for undergraduates and graduates. If you feel like you need a style guide, you can definitely purchase this one. I would recommend going on Amazon and finding a really inexpensive version to purchase. Just make sure that you purchase one from 2009 or later. There were updates made to the formatting guidelines because they do change from time to time. So make sure anything you buy is 2009 or later. So before we get started with learning all of these wonderful rules, remember that no matter what rules you learn from me, or about MLA, you always have to follow your instructor's guidelines. So we're going to go over MLA guidelines. I stick pretty close to those and I'll tell you any distinctions that I want to make, but for the most part, if your instructor wants to do something completely different, but you know MLA, don't feel like what you know about MLA trumps what they're saying. So just make sure you stick with what they tell you. You'll want to start with basic formatting guidelines. So generally speaking, you want to type your paper on a computer and use portrait white 8.5 by 11 inch paper, and I mean portrait orientation, don't flip it to landscaping, people do notice that. Um, you want to double space the text of your paper and use Times New Roman font. I've also listed Arial font, and you're allowed to use that if you have a learning or reading disability. I know that this tends to be a much easier font for people with those kinds of accommodations. So if you have that and you need to use it, please let me know. You want to leave only one space after periods, commas, other punctuation marks. and. All margins should be set to one inch on all sides. Please don't alter the margins. Um, I personally grade many papers every year, and any time you try to alter the margins to try to make your paper look longer, it's extremely noticeable. It's like being on an assembly line in a lot of senses. You can pick out the one thing that's different out of hundreds because you see so many of them. So not that your writing's not original, just that the formatting we're so used to seeing it that anytime you do anything to alter it, it's extremely noticeable. That includes changing the margins, um, making the spacing different, trying to alter the font to a different size, messing with the indentations at the top with the little ruler in Word. Don't do any of that. It's really noticeable and it would be easier to just talk to your instructor if you can't meet the deadlines and get some help. <clears throat> Some other guidelines are to make sure that you're using the headers with page numbers in the upper right hand corner. Use italics for titles. And if you're doing a page of endnotes, those go on a page before your works cited page. 
So formatting the first page. When I say MLA formatting for all work, this is how everything should be set up, like homework assignments, journal entries that you upload. Anything that is uploaded as a Word document should be in MLA formatting. So there's no title page. There is the double spacing. In the upper left-hand corner, very first line, your name, hit enter. Your double spacing is set up, so that's going to give you two lines. And then you put my name, spelled correctly. Double check that if you don't know. Um, hit enter. That's another two lines. Put, it, put in the course name. Hit enter. And hit the date. Now, hit enter again. And then you want to center and insert your creative and original title. Do not hit enter twice. It's just one enter, one set of two lines. Same thing after you're finished with your title. Hit enter one time and then move the justification back to left, not centered, so that you can start working on your actual paper. Your title should not be in bold, underlined, italics, or any kind of um, special notification to show your title. It's just standard capitalization format, so the important words are capitalized. Um, create a header in the upper right hand corner, so you want to use the insert feature on Microsoft Word. Do not try to type these in yourself, it throws everything off. If you don't know how to do that, I do have in the extra resources tab an MLA, how to set your paper up in MLA formatting using Word in extra resources, so make sure you take a look at that and understand it. It's a lot easier than trying to do what you're doing if you're trying to insert the page numbers by hand. So here's what your finished product should look like. The first way we're going to talk about citing work is the author page style, and this is what you'll most commonly come across. So here we need to do two things. We're going to show where we got our work by stating the author and then giving the page number. In some form or fashion, you have to let the reader know both of those. So here, we're reading a book by William Wordsworth called Lyrical Ballads, and we pull this phrase out. So we're going to say in our first example, Wordsworth stated that romantic poetry was marked by a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. Well, I said Wordsworth as my very first word. Um, I've indicated that it's his work, so I only need to put the page number. However, in the next example, I'm not accrediting him within my line. I'm just using his words. So now I need to tell the reader, hey, this is William Wordsworth, page 263. If you don't know who the author is, and this happens pretty frequently on internet sources, then you'll want to input the title of the work in parentheses. But you'll still give the page number. And this is what your citation on your work cited would look like. I'll go through these other citations somewhat quickly. If you want to stop and take a look at them, feel free to hit pause on your device. If you have works with multiple authors, it's essentially the same thing as with one, only you are juggling multiple. So here you see it's the same basic principle, Smith, Yang, and Moore. Here's the page number. And then in the second example, we're not actually stating the author's names, so we have them in the parentheses with page number. If we have multiple sources from one person, Instead of using their name, we're going to refer to them by article name or source name. So here you say we're here you see we're quoting Leitner from two different sources. So we have too soon and hand eye development here. When you're citing a quotation, you again want to make sure that your words are in the quotation marks, but take note that the punctuation goes outside of your citation, not inside of it. There is a distinct formatting for quotations that are long quotes, and that's any quote that's over four lines. However, for this class, 
do not utilize a quote over four lines. Our papers are very brief and unless you're in a graduate program or doing a much higher level of writing than 101, 102, 161, or 2089, you will not need such large blocks of text in your paper. From time to time, you do need to add or omit words from quotations, and I want to make sure that you understand context. We often hear things in the media like, this was taken out of context, and here's where that can happen for us. So we're writing a paper and we want to use Jan Harold Brunbaugh's work, and we use this line about some individuals make a point of learning every rumor or tale. Well, we realize individuals are pretty big, we need to really clarify who that is. So in brackets, we clarify that for the reading by adding who retell urban legends, where that would get fuzzy and unethical is if we put something in there that's not true, like who write folk songs or old wives tales. You have to stick to original intent and you cannot make the meaning change to fit your purpose. That can also come into play with the in-text example um, for omitting words. So say this is a very long quote and you don't need this middle section. It's completely irrelevant. You want to use the ellipsis, which people regularly call dot dot dot, but that's actually called an ellipsis. So here you say some individuals make a point of learning every recent rumor or tale, ellipsis, and in a short time a lively exchange of details occurs. So whatever you take out, you can't use that to support your argument if that dot dot dot, if that ellipsis represents something that would go against what you're saying. So you can't force it to mean something different than what you intend. Here's what your works cited should look like. <clears throat> you see that your last name and page number are still listed. This is just whatever page number it happens to fall. So if you have a four page paper and this is the fifth page, it should just say five. Works cited is centered as the title is centered. You have your list in alphabetical order. And here we have Kenneth Burke. We used multiple sources from him. So we have him listed alphabetically and then we alphabetized his sections, his articles that we used. Here are some additional places that you can go for help. I frequently go to Purdue Owl, which is your first listing here. It will get you on track with just about anything English related that you need. So it's a great place to check. It's what I use if I'm going to double check something. So if I'm confused or you're confused and we're both going to the same place, we'll line up. Um, Citation Machine will help you get your citations um, in check for your Works Cited page. And then most libraries, you have access to something called EasyBib, which will help you keep a running list of your citations and help you build out your Works Cited and in-text citation. So double check the institution we're at and see if we have access to that. All right, I hope that you found this helpful. And also, this slideshow, for the most part, came from Purdue Owl. So again, double check there if you have any questions. Thank you.